please welcome Chief Technology Officer, SAP, Jurgen Mueller. Hello to our three million strong developer community. Hello to our amazing partners. Hello to our dear customers. And of course, hello to our SAP employees. A very, very warm welcome to SAP Tech 2022. <laughs> Woo. You can see it's live, it is in person, it is global, and it's virtual. It's the best of all worlds. And we are so excited to have you. Whether you are here in Las Vegas, hello again, or you are in your office or in, at your home. In the keynotes today and tomorrow, you will learn about our latest and greatest announcements, including customers, partners, and of course, a lot of demos. And throughout TechEd, you can dive deep into the topics that interest you the most. 2022 is a very special year for us at SAP because we are celebrating SAP's 50th birthday. And thank you. And thanks to our founders and many, many more people. Um, I am thrilled today to announce SAP's 50-year NFT drop. As SAP TechEd participants, you can collect some of the most iconic moments of SAP as NFTs. The 50-year NFT drop honors SAP's history and innovations with beautiful digital assets. And the more sessions you attend, actually, the more NFTs you can get. Maybe, maybe, you still remember this one here, huh? Anyone collected any of those in the past? Woo! So now you can collect ribbons digitally. So make sure to participate in the 50-year NFT drop. You can register here. And now, without further ado, let us kick off this SAP Tech Ed. Are you ready? Are you ready? Nice. At SAP, we want to help the world run better and improve people's lives. And well-functioning business processes are essential for that. And believe me, at SAP, we love business processes. We really do. If you can love a thing, we love business processes. We offer the best end-to-end -end business processes in the world for enterprises. They are industry-specific because, of course, Processes in banking are different from the ones in telco, in healthcare, in retail, in the public sector, or pro with professional services. With SAP Signavio, we offer sophisticated business process transformation capabilities. In lower below, below that, you see all the application areas we cover. You will hear more about that in tomorrow's keynote. Today, we will focus on our SAP business technology platform. We created SAP BTP because you and we, we run into the same technical challenges around application development, especially in the area of getting to a clean core when moving to S4HANA, or challenges with automation or integration, data and analytics, and of course, AI. More than 15,000 customers are already, already live with BTP in the cloud. Two-thirds of the 100 largest customers in the world are BTP customers. And you, our community, you have been instrumental in this success. Every month, we see more than 400,000 visitors on our SAP community pages. So thank you for your contributions to our SAP BTP knowledge base. Today, I'm thrilled to share new platform features, functionalities, that will help you and your companies to be successful now and in the future. Let's first look at application development and automation. We will cover them together today. When it comes to application development and also automation, we support two sets of paradigms. One is low-code, low-code solutions, and the other ones are tools for professional developers who like to write code with ABAP or Java or JavaScript, etc. We have amazing new announcements in both areas. Let me start with low-code. We know that every company is becoming a tech company. So professional development skills 
and areas around that have become an even more precious skill. IDC predicts a global shortfall of 4 million developers by 2025. Hmm. What can we do? It's bad. No, it's not. We have to unleash the expertise of those who know the business best. And these are the business users themselves. And this brings me to the big announcement for today already. We are launching our low-code experience, SAP Build. SAP Build is the evolution of our low-code portfolio that we started a few years ago with Build.me, and we showed you last year at TechEd, SAP App Giver. SAP Build brings together previously disconnected products into a unified development environment. SAP Build includes three solutions. SAP Build Process Automation, SAP Build Apps, which is the next version of SAP App Giver with powerful new functionalities, and SAP Build Workzone. They leverage a common project registry and artifact repository. That means they have a common project lifecycle, they share BTP destinations, they also have access to the in-app content store. SAP Build's unified developer experience makes it easy to build powerful web and mobile applications. It has a beautiful user experience, powerful backend capabilities, and seamless integration to workflows, to RPA bots, to low-code, and also to all the other functionalities in S4. Access to business application data, for example, is very easy and it is secure. And we can help you solve business challenges faster, thanks to the world's largest domain-specific library of content. It includes more than 1,300 workflows and automations just waiting for you to use them. And finally, SAP Build allows business teams to collaborate with development and IT teams because we will need strong development and IT teams, but they need to work together. Developers can encapsulate their code, which they wrote, for example, in Business Application Studio, and then this can be used by business users to develop an SAP Build. IT can also enforce consistent governance and lifecycle management capabilities across all apps being developed. This way, IT teams can be confident that all apps deployed by the business meet necessary security and governance requirements. I hope what you see with SAP Build. Do you like it? We will, we will also get into some more details. And the next guest I want to discuss this with is from the NHL. This is such an exciting sport. I can't do justice by just talking about, you know, about it. So let's have a look. Please welcome Omar Mitchell. Look at this guy. I love this sweater. Omar, a pleasure. <laughs> Omar is the VP of Sustainable Infrastructure and Growth Initiatives at the NHL. Omar, great having you here. It's great to be here. Thank you. Omar, I remember in 2010, mm -hmm. the NHL launched a commitment to sustainability, NHL Green. Yes. Can you tell the audience a little bit about it? Absolutely. So NHL Green was started as a mandate by our commissioner to promote sustainable business practices across the league and its member clubs. Why? Because ice hockey relies on cold weather, fresh water, and healthy communities where we can live, work, and play. Climate change is impacting how the sport is played in its most natural form. Additionally, when you think about it, Professional ice hockey at the NHL is played in a giant refrigerator <laughs> on a frozen water sheet that depends on energy use to keep that ice cold. Increasing resource constraints and rising energy costs 
are all impacting the game. And that's why we need to do our part to reduce our environmental impact internally. We recognize that these efforts are part of a much longer journey. And the first part of this journey starts with measuring our environmental impact. Because, as you all know, you cannot impact what you do not measure. The NHL has 32 teams across North America, and managing the footprint of each of our arenas is one of the most critical aspects of our sustainability platform. We're working with SAP to track, to measure, and to help drive deeper insights into our venue operations so that our teams can share best practices and we can continue to improve. Omar, that is an impressive undertaking and a very important one. How did you go about it? Uh, it's challenging, <laughs> but to achieve more visibility into our environmental sustainability footprint, we co-innovated with SAP on the development of what we called our NHL Venue Metrics, which is built on existing SAP BTP foundation. It specifically uses SAP HANA Cloud and the SAP Analytics Cloud to collect process and report on venue operations data from our clubs and their arenas. And we can already see it here. So you have an overview. I saw SAP build work zone already. There's a lot of data to be entered. So um, you learned about SAP build to make this, what you already had with BTP, a little easier, right? Exactly, exactly. I'm excited to hear about it. So let me tell you a little bit more about it. First off, the data collection was pretty manual with many required fields. Look at it. Look at how many required fields there were. Much of this information was found in utility bills. So I thought, what if we could simply take a picture of those documents? In a matter of a few days, the team was able to create an app that can do just that. For information not captured in the utility bills, users can still enter that data in the app. Not a problem. They'll enter it manually. That's very cool. We see SAP build apps here. Yeah. You see a lot of uh, nice user experience. It's very simple. Here you have like a scan document. So right. You can use your phone, actually, for example, to scan a document. Um, what did you do? How, how did this all work? And what's happening when this data is entered? So once the information is submitted, it needs to be reviewed and approved at the league office, right? So here we needed to create an approvals process. What's really powerful is that the app can start the approvals process from the outset. And when all the data is ready for review, it gets routed to me and others to approve. After I approve that data, all of those data points are then populated automatically into the NHL Venue Metrics app that I showed earlier. Very nice. Here we see SAP build process automation. We do see the read scan invoice part as the workflow as well. So I like how you ex like improve the existing app using SAP build. And then what happens next? So this cuts down on a lot of the manual effort from the teams by doing this process, thereby saving a lot of much needed time and effort. And in our business, time is everything. Our clubs are passionate about reducing resource consumption and creating operational efficiencies. So our hope is to gain insights on best practices that can be shared across the league. Here we have all the information our teams need available in one spot. First, we can include the three parts of the Venue Metrics uh, platform, the Data Collection app, the Data Validation app, and the Data Insights dashboard, so everyone can easily access them. And you know those approvals I mentioned earlier? Managers can access them from this landing page as well. All of the data collected and processed is then visualized in this Venue Metrics reporting dashboard, which we see here. Omar, I like it because also here you're competitive, right? Yeah. You have energy consumption ranking by NHL arenas, 1 to 32. I guess you have some tough conversations on the left-hand side where energy consumption is super high. You have water, you have waste. Why does it work in the NHL? Many companies do not get here as fast as you did. This is an important part of our sustainability platform. And this is really key. Because when we think of sustainability, we think that sustainability equals innovation. Sustainability is about continuous business improvement and optimization, often via advanced technology. That technology in the hands of business experts helps drive constant innovation, buy-in from all internal stakeholders, and ultimately helps us achieve our sustainability objectives. 
Let me give you one example of such an innovation. It's the implementation of LED lights to illuminate the ice surface in the sports arenas where we play our game. Not only do this environmentally friendly LED lights save energy and re reduce resource consumption, approximately 20 to 30% based on the old technology, but they also improved the broadcast product so that the ice pops off the TV screen and fans at home can follow the puck better. It is these types of innovations that are a win-win, not just from the environment, but also from a business perspective. And we hope to glean more of exactly these types of innovations and best practices from our NHL Venue Metrics platform. This is why this technology is so powerful and why I'm excited that will help us achieve our environmental objectives. Omar, thank you so much for sharing your Absolutely. story. Absolutely. It's really a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Good. Omar Mitchell. Thanks, guys. And there's, there's a lot to learn for all organizations on this planet. Now, let me share even more powerful capabilities of SAP Build. Yes, there's even more than we have just seen. With Visual cloud functions, users can create business logic and data models, all visually, all provided by SAP built apps. We are also deeply integrating SAP Signavio with SAP built. As you know, Signavio is our powerful process intelligence and transformation solution. It's like, like having an X-ray into your processes and also the potential bottlenecks. And Signavio now can recommend over 135 pre-built automations that can be deployed using SAP build process automation. And in addition to that, we are announcing a new trigger-based integration for SAP, process, uh, SAP build process automation, which allows SAP Signavio and others to even trigger workflows automatically. And then we saw SAP build work zone in Omar's NHL example. With that, we are unifying our portal products for simplifying the creation of business sites. So SAP Build Work Zone brings together the SAP Launchpad service and the existing SAP Work Zone. It becomes a unified low-code portal development um, solution for building modern business websites that enable work to be done faster and more effectively for employees. Now, let us see an even more extensive demo of SAP Build. For that, I'm very happy to have our first SAP developer advocate here on stage, Daniel. Shalom, Daniel. Over to you. Thank you, Jürgen. A few minutes ago, we saw the application that the NHL was able to deliver using SAP Build. So let's take a little bit deeper dive into how such applications are created. As an example, our team wanted to create an application to show us the activities we could do while we're here in Las Vegas, choose one, and get the approval of the team. So let's start in the SAP Build lobby. In the lobby, we can create apps, processes, uh, work sites, and all of my apps that I created are here, and more importantly, I can see all the apps that were shared with me so I can collaborate with my teammates. So I started to build an app, and here you can see I built a, a UI to show a list of activities. And if we start the application, I'll even refresh it, and we can see that I've authenticated against BTP because you can see my logged in user, but unfortunately, we don't have any activities. My IT colleague has created a BTP service to, re to return the allowed activities that we can do here. And I don't really need to know anything about how he did it, except that he created a destination that points to it. So I'll go back into the application. I'll select the data tab. I'll add an integration based on a BTP destination, and I can see all of the destinations for my organization. If I select the Las Vegas activities destination, I can browse the data to make sure it's the service that I want. I can install the integration, I can enable the data entity, and I can save. And if I go back to my app and refresh it, I can indeed see that I get the data. Okay, that's nice. But now I want to make it so when I choose an activity, 
I want to associate it with an S for HANA business partner. So if I go into an activity, you can see that I have a place to select the business partner, but unfortunately, we have no business partners. Fortunately, my IT colleague has created a destination that points to our s hana system. So I can go back and select the s hana Cloud business partner destination. I could browse the data. This time, I actually have to search for the entity that I want. I can install the integration, I can enable that entity, and I can save. If I refresh the application and select an activity, I can indeed see that I have a list of business partners. Okay, beautiful. But now we want to create an approval process when we select an activity. So for that, I will go to the SAP Build store. Jurgen mentioned that there are over a thousand template uh, processes and automation bots that I can use for starting a project. And if I search for approvals, I can indeed see the ones that are related to approvals. And if I click this button, I can get a copy of that template brought into my lobby where I can work on it and modify it based on my needs. And that's exactly what I've already done. I've created a workflow, and I've made it so that any activity that has more than 10 people requires an approval. But I want to do something kind of clever. I want to make it. So anybody who chooses an activity from the NHL, that activity will automatically be approved because we want to all go to the Sharks game tonight. So I will add a condition that says if the activity contains NHL, I will say any condition, and I will apply. I will save this, and then I will, oops. I will save, I will release, I will release a new version now, and I will deploy it. Now the best part. The best part is that I can use the same destination functionality in SAP Build Apps to actually call the process automation APIs and trigger the workflow. A destination has already been automatically created when I installed SAP Build. I've done the integration already for that destination like we did for the s hana destination. I've added this button, and I've created a logic flow that triggers the, uh, triggers the process. And fortunately, that triggering is extremely simple. All I had to do was to drag in this create record flow function and configure it by just telling it which destination and to specify any data that that process needed, and that's what I did. So let's go back to the application and see if it worked. Uh-oh, we have a network error. Just a second. Let's, let's launch it again. Uh-oh, just a moment. We'll get back to the application now. Here's the application. We'll launch it again. Uh-oh. Maybe we need to, maybe we need the backup. <laughs> Can I have the backup? Mm-hmm. So here we've selected the Grand Canyon trip. We've selected a business partner, and we've triggered the workflow. Okay, and we can see that we've triggered the workflow. And if we go to the list of activities, we can see the workflow. And if we click on the status button, which uses the same destination that we used to trigger the workflow, but this time to get the status, we saw that it wasn't approved. If we now select the NHL game, and we select a 1,000 of my closest friends, you all, and we select the NHL, as the business partner and trigger the process, we see that it's indeed triggered. And if we go back to the activities and check the status, we can indeed see that it was automatically approved. Ooh. 
We can go to the approval inbox. We can go and select the Grand Canyon activity. We can manually approve it. And if we go back into the application and check its status, we can see that that also is approved. So what have we done? From inside an SAP build app, we've authenticated against BTP. We've used destinations to get data from s hana and BTP services. We've quickly created a workflow for doing approvals. And then we've used that same destination functionality to trigger that workflow and to check its status. Back to you, Jurgen. Daniel, thank you so much. <laughs> Count me in for the Sharks game, Daniel. And uh, thanks for being so brave. Um, here you saw how easy it is to create an app, single sign-on approvals, S4HANA connection, non-SAP data connection, and how IT and Daniel as a business user work together. I invite everyone to try this out. Make sure to check in with your IT department to make sure you have all the access rights um, such that everything works in the live, like in the live demo that you saw then uh, afterwards. Um, I loved how pro code, no code really comes together here. Daniel several times mentioned, hey, the IT team deployed this destination service, provided uh, the data API, etc. And now people of all skills can work together to solve problems faster. And I know you are fired up to try this out yourself, right? I can see it in the eyes of a few people here. You want to try it out, right? OK, good. Best way to do that is visit our SAP TechEd session about application development and automation tools. Also, check out sap.com forward slash builders. And there you will also get an explanation how to start with a free tier version of SAP Build so really you can start immediately. I think as humans, building things is part of our DNA. Already as kids, and uh, yes, these are some pictures of my childhood. Even, even as kids, we have this intrinsic motivation to take building blocks and to build something great. And with SAP Build, everyone can become a builder. Everyone. Let me introduce you to one more builder. You have heard from Omar how easy it was. We saw Daniel doing great things in almost no time. But if that did not convince you, I have one more proof point for you. I got to know another developer last week. Let's roll the video of Dak. Welcome to the basement. This is where I do all of my development. This is where I play with Rubik's Cubes. I do my 3D printing. I feel like this is a really fun space because every time I come down here, I feel like there's always a new adventure. I'm Dak, a 12-year-old from Massachusetts. I enjoy playing baseball, designing and 3D printing gadgets. Right now I'm creating a 3D printed baseball card of myself. I'm making origami, building with Legos, and solving puzzles like Rubik's Cubes, but my favorite thing in the world is coding and app development. I like programming, technology, and challenging myself, and I always wondered how someone can create an app. So I searched online for a no-code app building tool that lets me create and deliver apps quickly, and needless to say, this platform was the best one I found. My app is Knowledge Forever. That's general knowledge app for all ages. Um, it's free, it has no in-app purchases and no ads. During the summer, kids and teens don't spend much time learning. So the general idea with this app is to give kids the opportunity for 10 to 15 minutes a day to learn about various topics for free without being shown any ads that may be inappropriate while having fun. I have general knowledge, some game questions, there's food, there's chemistry, there's science, there's math, there's everything you can think of. Publishing my apps to the world has been a great experience, especially getting them downloaded from countries all over. There were even a couple countries I had to look up on a map where they were because I didn't know. And it's also really nice getting feedback from these users that I can use to improve this app or any future apps. This no-code platform helped me progress towards my goal of becoming a full-stack developer. I like no-code since I can save time 
by not writing every line of code and eventually making silly mistakes such as forgetting to put a comma or a semicolon and then spending the next couple hours trying to figure out what went wrong. I think the most satisfying part of working like this is just being able to create whatever you want. I like problems, I get experience, I know how to solve the problem if it pops up again, and I learn in the process of trying to find the problem, I also learn other things on the way there, like other skills. I haven't met any kids that do what I do as far as I've met. Um, and I think what I do is just, I, I like what I do, so I'm just gonna keep doing it. Does it ever pop in your head that, no, I don't think I can do that? No, you can do anything as long as you put your mind to it. Isn't that impressive? I, I learned a lot about Minecraft, and actually that Australia is wider than the moon. Who knew? You saw and heard from Dag how easy it is to turn ideas into reality with SAP Build. And I think he left us a great message. You can do anything as long as you put your mind to it. Before we continue with professional developers, let me give you a glimpse into the future, something we are exploring at the moment. Because with constant changes in business requirements and the need to deal with them in an ad hoc manner, like everything needs to be like immediate, urgent, the concept of composability will become even more essential. Not only on the application layer, that ex exists to a certain extent, but also on the process layer. And that means that, like with SAP Build, even complex business processes will be arranged much faster, much more conveniently by teams, again, of business experts and developers. And for this, processes will consist of more interchangeable business capabilities developed by SAP, but mostly non-SAP, on top of the SAP Business Technology Platform offered via an open marketplace. Now, let's come to professional developers. Over the last 50 years, our goal at SAP has always been to allow developers to focus on solving business problems. The invention of ABAP was all about that, developing business applications at scale. And you find this idea still reflected in our today's programming models, our RESTful application programming model, or RAP, for developing Fury apps and services in the ABAP world, and our cloud application programming model, or CAP, for Java and JavaScript developers. Now, let's uh, look at the ABAP world first. ABAP-based extensions and modifications have been a key success factor of SAP's ERP. And now it's time that we repeat the success in S4HANA Cloud while following a clean core approach. And for this, we need to turn these modifications and classic custom ABAP code into upgrade-stable extensions. This is at the center of the clean core approach and allows for smooth S4HANA upgrades. On our SAP Business Technology Platform, the ABAP environment already has been used by, uh, for years by partners and by customers to build side-by-side -side extensions and cloud solutions. If you are an ABAP geek, you probably know this under the term steampunk, right? See a few people nodding. And now, especially to the ABAP community, it is time for a change. We proudly introduce ABAP Cloud for S4HANA Cloud and for S4HANA on-premise. We took all the great experiences you made with Steampunk and put them into ABAP Cloud. ABAP Cloud is designed for state-of-the-art, upgrade, stable, and cloud-ready ABAP extensions for S4HANA directly within the S4HANA stack. So what does it mean to use ABAP Cloud? It means using public SAP APIs to access S4HANA data and functionalities, it means to use public SAP extension points to objects. Modifications to SAP objects are no longer allowed. It means to use the strong tooling support you get with the ABAP development tools as your ABAP IDE. It also means to continue using RAP. And it also means 
that SAP technologies like DynPro or Web DynPro are not longer supported for ABAP development. Once you switch your ABAP objects to ABAP Cloud, the ABAP compiler will actually make sure and help you to stick to the rules of ABAP Cloud. And all this is exciting because it enables you to get to a clean core in a much, much simpler way. All our Rise with SAP customers, for example, they love that. So let me repeat, ABAP Cloud is now available in all S4HANA editions from this year onwards, be it S4HANA Cloud Public Edition, S4HANA Cloud Private Edition, or S4HANA, uh, S4HANA On-Premise. So from now on, ABAP Cloud shall be your preferred ABAP development model, be it on SAP BTP or S4HANA. My advice, use SAP TechEd to kickstart your ABAP Cloud training immediately. You will also see ABAP Cloud in action in the day to keynote tomorrow. Now, let us talk about CAP. Because what ABAP Cloud is for the ABAP world is our cloud application program model for Java and JavaScript developers. CAP includes libraries and tools for building enterprise-grade services and applications. And a couple of months ago, I visited an SAP App House network partner of ours in Australia. Their name is Born Digital, and they were super excited about CAP, so I relatively spontaneously asked them to record a message for this keynote. Let's play the video from the CEO, Selim, and his team. Hello, and welcome to TechEd. We are at the Born Digital App House in Melbourne, uh, and we love the um, SAP Cloud Application Programming Model because security and great development practices, freedom of tools and technologies based on proven open source technologies, or high return on investments. It's easy to learn. ABAP friendly. Data based agnostic. You're on mute, Andrew. <laughs> Hey, Joe, just record it. Keep on going. We can trim that. They can trim it. Fast and flexible development platform. We hope you have a great tech ed from sunny Melbourne. <laughs> Salim, Salim, Phil, team of Bond Digital, thanks a lot. And the good thing is that. ABAP and CAP are not separate universes. They can be easily connected. And I'm happy to have our next developer advocates, Mamiki and Nico here on stage, who will present how this works. Salam, Mamiki. Hello, Nico. The stage is yours. <laughs> Thanks, Jürgen. And hi, everyone. We want to show you how easy it is to get started using business events as part of your own applications or to extend standard SAP applications. This new technology allows ABAP developers to use RAP to define, raise, or catch events. On the other side, it allows, develop allows developers to use CAP to do the same in non-ABAP runtimes. And the SAP BTP event mesh allows for a seamless exchange of these events from all BTP runtimes and programming models. Now we'll start on the ABAP side. We have several objects here, which are all a part of the ABAP RESTful application programming model that we created to list all people involved in this keynote. So we have our transactional database table, several CDS views on top of that table, and of course we have our behavior definition. We want to persist the new transaction, but also send out an event when it gets created. We're using a managed scenario here, and you'll notice that we also have the define, define the with additional save, and the additional save here is key. Now this lets us write our own save handler, which gets fired in addition to the managed save handler. And this way, we can add the event, add the event raise on save with our own logic. And then at the very bottom, we have our event send group, which uses a parameter. This parameter is an abstract entity that defines the event payload. So now, let's look at our implementation class. There we go. 
So we have the save modified method here that allows you to add additional logic when the save occur, and this is the new syntax for raising the event, raise entity event. We as developers, we don't have to deal with the technical details about how this is being sent to the event mesh. It's all abstract. We just say that we want this to raise the event, this is the event name, and here's the, the data for the payload. And next, we want to receive the event in a cap application. Let me just jump in here. The business application studio went to sleep while I was backstage. <laughs> we'll be right back. So I'll grab a new terminal here. So we're in our cap application. And one thing I want to point out is that we haven't even deployed this application to SAP BTP at this point. We're going to run the cap side of this locally during development. And that is made really simple to do because I can just do a CDS bind and then give it the name of the service, which is Tekka 2022. This is a quick and secure setup since none of my credentials were ever stored as part of this test configuration. I can now start the service with CDS Watch. It is now connecting to the event mesh service in the cloud with all the technical details, which I didn't have to maintain. And it is now listening for the event. Here we go. So now we go back over to the ABAP side. Now we can go ahead and run our wrap application from the service binding. We're gonna go ahead and create a new crew member. So we're gonna enter first name, last name, and email address, select create. And now we can see right here, <laughs> there we go. Now we can see that the event was listening to our event, uh, to our event in fact, and heard the event, and now can process the event and do additional tasks on the cap side as well. That's right. And all of this is multi-directional. So we also set up the ABAP system to receive events. This can be a great way to extend or respond to standard SAP object events. Or we could go the other direction and send events from CAP and have them received on the ABAP side. As you can see, that's a super easy way to integrate RAP and CAP applications together using the SAP BTP event mesh functionality. Back to you, Jürgen. I'm Ike, Nico, thank you so much. Thank you. You have seen it's really never been easier to um, create event-based extensions and connect them with ABAP Cloud and CAP. People who know me can attest that I'm always very curious. I want to understand the details. And recently I heard about a project that uh, we as SAP are doing with Boston Consulting Group in the area of sustainability. So last week I reached out and met with the development team of BCG to get direct feedback from them. And they told me about their work to create a circular economy software as a service application. Before that project, the development team had plenty of experience with Azure and AWS. No experience with SAP, none. And they were excited about CAP. They got a little bit of support from SAP, but also they were excited about the CAP code examples that you find online and th that they could use other BTP services easily. Initially, they did not think about a multi-tenancy application, but that requirement came just during the project, like things happen, right? Um, and they were super impressed with CAP's multi-tenancy support. And if you look at how it works, you will quickly understand their excitement. Basically, you add a one-liner to your project configuration and when a customer subscribes to your app, everything is provisioned. Even the HANA cloud tenant, all the security measures were immediately fulfilled uh, for them because uh, HANA cloud supports data encryption. But let's think beyond the initial app. I mean, once an app is out there, you get new feature requests, right? Um, and not all feature requests are important for all customers. And this is where the new extensibility feature of CAP comes to the rescue as it allows you to create extension packages with little coding effort. And you can share these extensions with your customers with just another line in the project configuration. And that activates this extension for selected tenants. 
and customers can now select the features they need from their SaaS providers, partners, or even they can build their own, all using the same programming model, CAP. And this can also happen within a company. So if you think about your company, it can be that you develop something, and then it, one department has different requests and requirements than another department, or a country needs specific capabilities in an app. And in overall, you just saw how much progress we have made in CAP regarding multi-tenancy, regarding extensibility, regarding feature toggles. CAP applications today already run on BTP's Cloud Foundry runtime, and from now on, they also run on the Kuma runtime. These are our updates for CAP. I hope you liked what you saw. Good. And we have a few more great news. The Business Application Studio is now powered by Microsoft Visual Studio Code Editor. From the UI, you don't even notice, but VS Code plugins can now directly be used in Business Application Studio. And that is a great step forward for everyone who codes. And there are plenty of other announcements in the SAP Tech and News Guide. So make sure to check that one out as well. And later on today, our developer advocates have their download session. They will present many more, more detailed examples of how to be even more productive. So do not miss that one. We know that people do their best work when they use the devices and the apps they love. And more than ever, today, everything happens on the go. Your mobile device can find your way to a work site or translate a conversation. I was in Japan recently. I do not speak Japanese. Of course, my mobile phone helped me. It can also bring up-to-the-minute data to your fingertips so you can make the right decision at the right time. And we believe that mobility is foundational for everyone. And that is why we have partnered with the leader that knows enterprise mobility best, Apple. BTP includes best-in-class iOS toolsets to take advantage of Apple's hardware and software innovations to build powerful and compelling business apps that users love. Our long-standing relationship with Apple goes well beyond the apps that we build together, the devices we use at SAP, and how we enable our joint customers to delight their users. Today, our customers and partners are already using BTP and Apple devices to transform the experience of businesses everywhere. Our own team has also fully embraced mobile. I'm proud about what the teams have done with apps for our own employees and with apps we build for customers. Personally, I cannot live without my SAP Analytics Cloud Dashboard on my iPhone. It's always up to date, and I even run my bot area by it. At SAP, we are also adopting the latest Macs, powered by Apple's M series chip for our employees. And we are seeing as much as 52% performance improvement over previous devices for some of our most intensive applications, including SAP Analytics Cloud. And today, here, we are excited to hear how Apple is using BTP to power iOS apps across their business. Let's roll the video. Good morning. It's great to join you at TechEd this year. I'm Scott. I lead enterprise systems at Apple, which includes SAP platform development. As we've shared before, SAP has been an essential part of Apple's business infrastructure for many years. Today, BTP is powering many of the mobile apps that our teams use from supply chain to operations. Our own retail teams use apps built on BTP for demo device setup, pickup and delivery, back of house operations, and inventory management. The BTP SDK for iOS also makes it easy to tap into powerful iPhone and iPad hardware features, such as cameras, sensors, and on-device machine learning, just to name a few. And BTP has made building enterprise-grade apps easier by providing familiar APIs for critical baseline features like secure transactions, role-based data access, offline data synchronization, and other advanced BTP services. Our teams have experienced incredible gains in development efficiency and app performance with Swift UI and BTP. We can build apps 40% faster than before and can develop and deploy apps to our teams in as little as six weeks. For example, 
We were able to scale efficiently with a single app supporting tens of thousands of business users, while at the same time ensuring privacy and security at every point. The combination of BTP services and HANA Cloud has enabled our teams to build iOS apps with the best possible performance, scale, and most importantly, very tight integration with our SAP landscape, so we can serve our customers in entirely new ways. We'll continue our close partnership with SAP to ensure BTP enables access to the latest innovations from SAP and Apple. I can't wait to see what you build using BTP and iOS. Thank you. It's remarkable to hear about the incredible apps Apple is building for their employees using BTP and iOS at such incredible scale and speed. And we are learning every day from Apple. They are not only using BTP, but also working closely with my team in shaping how we move BTP forward. This year, we are introducing even more capabilities to the BTP SDK for iOS, including concurrency support for Swift, new APIs for Apple Watch and augmented reality, a whole new visual language, theming capabilities, and accessibility improvements. All the new features and tutorials are available in our developer community on developer.sap.com. You will see how all these capabilities come together for new and unique use cases in tomorrow's keynote, so stay tuned. Let's sum it up for application development and automation. We showed you how our low-code portfolio around SAP Build is taking business and IT to the next level. You saw the great improvements we have made with ABAP Cloud and with CUP as well. And you heard how Apple is using the S uh, BTP SDK for iOS to build compelling new apps. Try things out yourself and share feedback in the developer community. Now, let's look at the next pillar of BTP. Let's look at integrations. Most companies, I heard, use more than 120 different solutions. SAP solutions are oftentimes a very business-critical part of that. And we made sure that SAP to SAP integrations work. You'll hear more about that in tomorrow's keynote. And SAP systems need to be perfectly integrated with many other systems. Because without integration, nothing works. And now think about these 120 different applications that companies use on average. Integrating them point to point means to manage more than 7,000 integration points. It would be an IT nightmare to do it that way. So you need a powerful and versatile integration solution to handle that complexity. And that is the SAP integration suite as part of SAP BTP. Its main capabilities are cloud integration for process integration, event mesh for event-based integration, and API management for API-based integration. And customers all around the globe already use this to integrate all kinds of systems. And we support every form of integration, SAP to SAP, SAP to non-SAP, non-SAP to non-SAP, business to business, business to government, any integration style pattern, including events and APIs. A great example of that comes from Barclay. Let's roll the video from Ben from Barclays. Our customers have been asking us to integrate some of our products with their software to make payment processes as seamless and frictionless as possible. And in taking our Barclay card virtual card and integrating it into SAP, we've really removed some of the pain points and the friction involved in some multinational corporates paying their suppliers. So what we've done is we've created a, a seamless payment mechanism whereby customers can make payments within their ERP and within their SAP applications. Barclay Card now hosts uh, the, the app, the virtual payments app, in the SAP business technology platform. And we've utilized the SAP integration suite to get our technology into SAP Ariba, SAP Business One, and S4 HANA to really provide an integrated solution to all our merchants in the market. The integration we've done with SAP is all about large corporate multinationals making payments to their suppliers. And by integrating with SAP, what we've managed to do is take a lot of friction out of the process and make it more integrated into their ERP and uh, finance processes, which is a massive benefit to them. 
Thank you, Ben. And we continue to help you get more done with ease. SAP Integration Suite is open and provides more than 200 connectors to non-SAP systems as well. Look at that. There are 2,600 pre-packaged integration flows, roughly 20% more since TechA last year. 3,400 APIs, also roughly 20% more since last year. You can find all of them in our SAP API Business Hub. And integration scenarios are also made available as community content. So based on real customer examples, integration content is provided as a starter on GitHub. And all those efforts also receive external recognition. We are ranked a leader in Gartner's Magic Quadrant for enterprise integration platforms as a service. And one important capability of that is API management. We talked about it, but I want to go a little bit deeper because I know many scenarios where customers use SAP API management to make their systems, like their ERP systems, accessible, and customers who are building their own microservices architecture within the company. Maybe that's happening in your company as well. An Italian utility provider, Enel, is an example of that. They've created overall more than 500 APIs. But when you do that, of course, you want to have a tight grip around which APIs are exposed, especially to the internet. Let's see how SAP API management can help with that in our next demo. Hola, Antonio. Over to you. Thanks, Jürgen. Hola, SAP developers. Hybrid landscapes are a reality nowadays. Our enterprise landscape exists in the cloud and on-premise. Securely exposing your on-premise data over the internet is a common requirement in hybrid landscapes. Let me show you how you can leverage API management to achieve this. So this, what you see on screen, is a service running in an on-premise server. As you can see, it contains some business data, right? Unfortunately, this, is, this service is not secure, and I need to expose this data over the internet. So in order to achieve that, I first need to configure a cloud connector to establish that secure connection between SAP BTP and my on-premise server, OK? Now, fortunately, this is a CAP service, which means that I can easily generate an open API specification document for this service, which I will then use in order to create my API in API management. This same document is what I'm going to import in API management. But before that, I had to configure an API provider. This API provider is what tells my API management instance that it needs to go to that Cloud Connector instance in order to route traffic there, OK? So now I'll go ahead and design my API. I'll input the file that I created before, select it, and then just go ahead and create my API. Now, as I mentioned before, I created an API provider. So here, I'm just going to select it so that I let API management know that it needs to go to that Cloud Connector instance in order to retrieve the data, OK? As we can see, these are the resources that are available as part of my API. Now, I'm missing one component here, which is security, OK? In order to put some security on this service, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to define uh, a policy. In this case, this is a verify API key policy, OK? Just select here and add the verify API key. Excellent. So now I need to specify exactly where in my request is it that I need to specify that API key. In this case, I will need to specify the API key as a header in my request. So I'll update my API, and I'll deploy it. OK? Now, the API is deployed, but developers are not able to yet discover this API in the API Business of Enterprise. In order to do that, what I do is that I will add the API to an existing product. In this case, it's the SAP Ticket 2022. Now, I'm just going to select my API, hit OK, and publish this. So now, other developers or builders in my company will be able to find my API in the API Business Hub Enterprise. So you can see here, I access SAP Ticket 22, and you see the Las Vegas activities and all the resources that are available there. Now, let's go and test the API, OK? So I'll select my API here. I go to the API test console, select my API, and select the, yep, this is the correct path, and click Send. You see that I get an error message here. Now, 
this error message is because I need to specify an API key as part of my request, okay? So I previously created an application in the API Business Hub. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to copy this application key and use it in my request. In order to do that, I create a header, API key, paste the value, click send, and there you go. As you can see, this is data from my on-premise server. So what have you seen now? We've seen how SAP BTP, an API management capability of the SAP integration suite, can be leveraged to securely expose your on-premise data to the outside world. Thank you. Over to you. Thank you so much, Antonio. Thanks a lot. So you really saw how easy it is to publish, to find, to secure APIs within your enterprise. And by that, also the integration suite keeps APIs sprawl and check and provides you a simple way of securing your APIs and therefore your business. Quick question uh, to the audience here. Do we have any SAP process orchestration customers in the audience? Anyone in your company is using process orchestration? Okay, a few here, yeah? Um, so you now must hear this um, because we are helping you get into the cloud even smoother. Um, for example, when you do a rise with SAP and go to the cloud with your systems, you must hear this. We provide you with a very smooth transition with three um, offerings that we now have in the SAP integration suite. First, a migration factory program to scope and plan your cloud upgrade. Second, an assessment and migration tool from SAP. And third, free regression test partner tools for 12 months. So make sure to check them out. Many larger customers will not or cannot move all these systems to the cloud immediately. Think about customers on their transition to S4HANA or industries like public sector or even very remote locations like wind farms or solar farms. And that is where we need to cater for hybrid landscapes as well. And for those situations, we are releasing SAP Integration Suite Edge Integration Cell in beta this year and in general availability next year. Edge Integration Cell is a local runtime offered as an optional extension to SAP Integration Suite. It enables you to run your process integration, event inter integration, and API management scenarios on premise or in a private cloud. The first uh, batch of this beta program is unfortunately already booked, but you can register for the next batch by contacting your account managers or your customer success partners. So let me wrap up everything related to integration. SAP Integration Suite is a leader in the market. We support a large variety of use cases, such as process integration, event-based integration, and API management. And you can always look at the available predefined integrations at api.sap.com. So if you have any integration needs across SAP and also non-SAP, this is the logical choice. Now, let us have a look at the next area of the BTP, which is data and analytics. And this area, actually, is the area where technology leaders spend the most money after their decision regarding an infrastructure as a service. And today, every organization wants to be data-driven, right? So a little exercise. We are also now, what is it, an hour in. So please raise your hand or stand up if you agree to the following statement. Data should be behind every single important decision and enterprise plan. If you agree, stand up, straight up, stretch a little bit. It's one hour. <laughs> Very good. So I see a lot of people standing. Data should be behind every single decision and enterprise plan, right? OK. Now, um, keep standing, keep standing if you agree to the following statement. Companies that you know, most of them really take data-driven decisions. The companies you know mostly take data-driven decisions. <laughs> I, I see a lot of people sitting, but also quite a few standing. That's good. You can sit down. Thanks. My experience is 
also that many, many companies want to, everyone wants to, and says, yes, I'm a data-driven company. Everything I do is backed up by data. I know what I'm doing. But in reality, often, this is not completely the case. And too often, data is extracted from SAP systems, and by doing that, losing business contact, losing control over what is arguably your most valuable enterprise data. And then uh, you can spend more time reconstructing context of that data than you spend time making data-driven decisions. And that leads to countless hours of work to reconcile the semantics of that data and worst case, compliance issues, etc. And this is where we can help you and your company significantly with our data and analytics solutions. The most critical ones are SAP HANA Cloud, Data Warehouse Cloud, SAP Analytics Cloud. There are many more, but these are the most critical ones, and they help you to leverage the full meaning and value of SAP data. They also help you to connect all other data you need, and they help you to ensure governance and compliance, among many other things. Three weeks ago, I met with Maersk in Berlin. Maersk is one of the largest logistics companies on this planet, providing integrated end-to-end -end supply chain services around the world. Now, I had a meeting with them. We were finished. I actually walked out and said, ah, by the way, Jürgen, thanks for your analytics stack. Let's hear from Paul from Maersk what he means with that. Maersk has been using SAP Finance for several years, and we are on a journey to implement SAP S4 HANA to support our strategy of being the global integrator of container logistics. Data is key to achieve our strategy, and this is where the SAP Analytics stack plays a very important role for us. BW for HANA, SAP Analytics Cloud, and Data Intelligence are key parts of that analytics strategy. Our journey started with SAP Analytics Cloud in late 2020, when we decided to use it as a planning tool for our SG&A costs, which are more than 5 billion US dollars annually. I am proud to say that SAC has enabled us to standardize and automate a highly fragmented, error-prone, manual and time-consuming process with onboarding of more than 1,000 users across the globe. Feedback from our finance leadership team and users has been excellent. Our key users are also very comfortable in creating stories themselves using low-code and no-code features. Our analytics journey continues with the use of BW for HANA and SAC to bring more insights from data in our financial processes in order to cash, procure to pay, and accounting to reporting. Simultaneously stepping up from descriptive to predictive and prescriptive analytics. We're using data intelligence for data orchestration and machine learning use cases to validate data quality coming from upstream processes. I'm absolutely clear that the combination of the SAP Analytics stack with BW, SAC and DI has enabled us to be a truly data-driven company. We're now exploring the possibility of using SAC for financial planning and analysis and to also change the way we run senior leadership meetings in Maersk through the use of the digital boardroom. Thank you, Paul. And I am excited to announce new capabilities that will further help you implement your data-driven strategy. Let's start with HANA Cloud, our database as a service offering. It's our second most consumed service right after the SAP integration suite we talked earlier about. I'm proud that data volume under management of HANA Cloud doubled since the beginning of this year. HANA Cloud really provides the single data foundation with multimodal processing capabilities. What does it mean? You can do machine learning, you can do graph analytics, you can do spatial, and it has industry-specific, um, industry-leading translytical capabilities HANA is so famous for. It supports all the security standards you would expect for encryption, for user management, for authentication, for authorization. It goes even further. It has unique capabilities for data masking and anonymization to protect privacy while retaining inherent value of data. And it also doubled growth in active customers since last year. And one of those active customers with HANA Cloud is Henkel. Henkel implemented a new data-driven trade promotion management system. Their target is to have more than 200,000 promotions per year and be able to 
and run them. After evaluating many different vendors, of course, they chose SAP. And they benefited from HANA Cloud, Data Warehouse Cloud, the SAP integration suite, our modern development tools, as well as strong governance and security capabilities. Complex structures like authorization concepts they could take over from SAP ERP and then reuse them and combine them into a modern data app. Henkel's system is now also enriched with third-party data, which allow them to gain a competitive advantage. Customers like Henkel often have many, many extractors to extract data from SAP systems. And with S4HANA and Data Warehouse Cloud, I foresee that at least 90% of those extractors will not be necessary anymore. Imagine the reduction of complexity and think about that in your data strategy, especially in the move to S4HANA. And when you run trade promotion management or trade promotion optimization, you want to combine this data with non-SAP data like search trends, social media, etc. And with SAP, you now can do that by connecting to various data sources. And to make that easier for you, we have published a set of reference architectures that show you how you can federate queries from an analytics cloud and data warehouse cloud to SAP data sources, but also to hyperscaler data sources without the need of any data replication. And underneath, HANA is what makes all this magic happen. And with applications like that, we are entering a new class of cloud applications that really use data and AI to provide powerful new experiences. Organizations like Zalando Payments or Team Liquid in eSports or a broad set of ecosystem ISVs are developing intelligent data apps powered by SAP HANA. Zalando Payments, for example, they have implemented a holistic view of financial and non-financial risk data by combining different SAP solutions such as BTP and SAP governance risk and compliance. Team Liquid, a very different example, has built an intelligent data app on HANA Cloud for the eSports game Dota 2. For every match, there are roughly 5,000 relevant data points. They imported roughly 6 million eSport matches. So now in their HANA Cloud, they have 30 billion rows of data. If like any single person would play this amount of games, you would play 24-7 for almost 300 years. That data is now stored in HANA Cloud, and they use it strategically to analyze certain game situations and also to inform which characters to pick depending on what the opponent is doing. That's very important in this game. And they say HANA Cloud helps them to getting these like 1% or 2% performance improvement that makes the difference in top sports, also in eSports. And now, to demonstrate how you can use HANA Cloud to build intelligent data apps, I welcome Vitaly on stage. Privit Vitaly. Привіт, Юргене. Доброго ранку, Техет. Building intelligent data application is a team sport with a close collaboration between data scientists, building machine learning models, and application developers productizing these models by embedding them into enterprise applications. In this example, these two are working on an application for a purchasing organization that analyzes hundreds of points of sales in their geographical region of responsibility. Prices may change a few times a day. As a data scientist, do we have any more data scientists here in the room? OK. As a data scientist, I spent most of my time in some interactive development environment, I bet you too, like Jupyter Labs in SAP Data Intelligence. Python and SQL are primary languages in this case. So, thanks to Python machine learning client for SAP HANA, here you can see I'm importing HANA ML. I can process big volumes of multimodal data stored in SAP HANA database right there without replicating them. I do exploratory data analysis, and for me, it generates HANA SQL and executes this in the database on the fly. So only results like visualization or summary tables are returned here to the client. 
once I'm happy with these data sets, I'm moving to a machine learning workflow. And in this case, I'm leveraging auditive model, time series forecasting models from SAP HANA predictive analytics library. You can see I did import it already. It is a modern approach to forecast time series data. And when using this massive attribute in the call, multiple points of sales at the same time are calculated, thanks to SAP HANA power, powerful parallel processing. To accelerate a handover from a data scientist to an application developer, the Python ML client allows the generation of a complete set of either SQL or ABAP design time artifacts. So I did this generation already for an SQL art, uh, set of artifacts. So you can see that the complete set, including MTA YAML and including database sources with CDS, grants, uh, procedures, and uh, roles have been generated. I can preview, uh, and it is indeed the code that can be deployed now. And this is where I'm switching now to a role of the application developer. So putting ahead of the application developer. Any application developers here in the room? Okay, quite a few still. Happy to welcome you here. Uh, I put these artifacts already in my CAP project. And I'm using SAP Business Application Studio for that as well. Uh, to save you time, I have built and deployed this project already. So it is running as a backend service, providing APIs to access data and to access as well functions that are execute machine learning operations like prediction or training the model. This can be seen as well from the HDI container of this application deployed. This is how a Fiori application can look like when using this backend. It was built by my friend, a front-end uh, front uh, expert, Nico, who you've met already earlier today. In this application, for any points of sales from a list, a business user can just see historical prices, but as well get an insight into the predicted values just with the click of the button. And these prediction values are coming from SAP HANA Cloud. From here now, you as application developers, and I bet there are more application developers that I saw hands raised, can take it further just making this insight more actionable. So you can add functionality for the application uh, in this application for business users to perform an action, or you can got an automated job develop that would execute some business process based on this data. You've just seen how to enhance an application with additional insight to benefit from multimodal data processing that Jurgen mentioned earlier and machine learning pushed down to the database engine. It makes this whole approach of developing intelligent data applications powered by SAP HANA Cloud as a single data foundation much more secure and highly efficient. Back to you, Jurgen. Vitaly, thank you so much. Let me briefly share some more technical highlights of HANA Cloud that we are announcing today. First, SAP HANA Cloud now supports MongoDB's wire protocol. So HANA Cloud can now be used as a drop-in replacement for MongoDB. And also the second one is that we are announcing uh, for end of the year a flexible core memory ratio that can even reduce your total cost of ownership further when you are, for example, needing more CPU capacity, but not more memory, or vice versa. Now, let us talk about analytics a bit. The number of active users in SAP Analytics Cloud grew by roughly 60% this year. Number of users for Data Warehouse Cloud more than uh, doubled, so thank you a lot for that adoption. And I want to thank everyone also for providing feedback through the SAP Continuous Influence Program. So please, your feedback coming there's nothing better than the user base being directly connected to our development teams. And I want to share one example with you that came out of this in the analytics area. The undo redo feature for SAP Analytics Cloud was one of the most requested features overall. 
And you might say, hey, it's only two buttons, but these two buttons are really increasing the user experience a lot. So here you go, undo, redo, available in SAP Analytics Cloud. And this leads me to our next big news. Today we are announcing a controlled release of new user experience in SAP Analytics Cloud, the Unified Story. Unified Story brings together data visualization and application creation capabilities. So business users can start by building a simple story via drag and drop functionalities. Often that is enough. At least it covers 90% of the requirements. And with Unified Story, we make it easier to take this dashboard and extend it with no-code features, such as theming and custom widgets, even low-code scripting. And then developers can take it one step further, if required, and incorporate more advanced coding functionalities. So Unified Story unleashes citizen developers while providing a seamless transition to developers to develop advanced analytical applications. And customers like Red Bull, they are excited about this already. They got a sneak peek, and they are using SAP Cloud Unified Story for several mission-critical use cases in the area of analytics and planning. Speaking about planning, we live in very, very volatile times, rising inflation, supply chain disruptions, a lot of other challenges. And now, more than ever, companies and organizations need planning processes in place to respond properly to these challenges. SAP is a market leader in extended planning and analytics. So also here, we offer to help you with these um, planning needs across workforce management, supply chain management, marketing planning, sales planning, procurement planning, or, of course, financial planning. As you saw in the news, probably, about the crypto exchange, FTX, liquidity planning is very, very, very important. And when you think about it, a lot of the data that you actually need for this is already in your SAP systems. It's in ECC, in S4HANA, success factors, digital supply chain, or Ariba, or SAP treasury management, or your business warehouse. And via Data Warehouse Cloud, we talked about it, you can connect external data sources like energy prices, inflation, or census data. In addition to that, we created a dedicated data marketplace, which makes it super simple for all of you to tap into more than 3,000 data products already today. And all the planning models you need, you can model as content in SAP Analytics Cloud. The good thing is, we have content for you. You can build on top of what we have already modeled for you. And then you can, again, use the full power of SAP Analytics Cloud to, for example, run what-if scenarios. You can include Monte Carlo simulations or predictive capabilities. You saw what Vitaly was doing here. So whenever it comes to planning and anyone comes to you with that, think about SAP and think about SAP Analytics Cloud. And we will bring planning to the next level as well. This is still experimental, but we foresee a system that continuously monitors everything going in in a company, comparing plans with actuals all the time, learning when to find anom anomalies that need and require action. So it can come up with a proposal like, Jürgen, there is a hyperinflation going on in these three countries. We have not, not adjusted our salaries yet, so the risk of employee attrition is extremely high. And here are a few suggestions what we could do. And that then gives me the right information I need when I need it. Also, we believe that the human-computer interaction for this will change. We are working on automatically rendering business insights via short, like, TikTok-style videos. Currently, these are co-innovations with a few customers, but we invite you to explore this with us, the future of analytics here at TechEd or online or via your SAP contacts. So let me summarize the data and analytics section as well. We just saw how you can create a new class of intelligent data apps with HANA Cloud. Via Data Warehouse Cloud, you can connect all the data you need, all the data sources. We have a dedicated data marketplace for you. And we saw the SAP Analytics Cloud unified story with data visualizations and application creation capabilities. We talked about SAP 
in the context of extended planning and analysis as well. And these are just some of the exciting news of, that we have in the data and analytics area. Another area that SAP BTP covers is AI. We don't want to be the leader when it comes to data science marketplaces or the latest AI tools to develop deep learning models. You saw Vitaly using Jupyter Labs, and, and that's completely fine. But we want to be the best when it comes to embedding AI into our applications and our platform. And in that context, we help you to embed AI into your end-to-end -end business processes as well, like we did with our more than 130 AI scenarios. So you must be very busy with all this information right now. And maybe the most important question is still open, how to get started? First of all, take a look at our new use cases we have on sap.com. These are real life examples, and they will help you understand and adapt SAP BTP faster. There are also more than 170 so-called missions on the SAP Discovery Center as well, just waiting for you. And then take the advantage of our learning offerings. Because when I talk to customers and partners around the world, they tell me about the largest hurdle of more BTP adoption. It's not the technology, it's not the price, nothing like that. It's just available knowledge within your own company and within the ecosystem. SAP BTP is already and will be critical for every SAP customer. So it's clear, BTP adoption will double, will triple, will quadruple in the next years. And you remember Dak, the 12-year-old boy? When I talked to him, he said, Jürgen, I only have one wish. Make SAP build even more accessible. And for all those reasons, we are redoubling our efforts to address the need for knowledge. And we are committing today to upskill by 2025 not one person, not one million people, but two million people worldwide. <laughs> and I know Dak will help us making progress even with developers very early in their career. And in addition to our free online learning, we are partnering with the world-class learning platform Coursera. Coursera has more than 100 million global learners, so let's roll a short video from the CEO, Jeff. Hello, SAP Tech Ed. I'm Jeff Madgen, called to the CEO of Coursera, and I'm excited to announce that SAP is launching entry-level professional certificates on Coursera. These certificates are designed for learners of all backgrounds, no college degree or industry experience required. They prepare learners for entry-level job roles in some of the most in-demand fields. We're honored to partner with SAP to increase access to job-relevant skills and to expand economic opportunity for everyone. Looking forward to working together. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. As a Coursera subscriber, you can learn everything you need to get a certificate as an SAP technology consultant. And with certified uh, solution skills, you can, of course, get a competitive advantage in your current role and the marketplace in general. So to give you the full picture and overview of our learning resources, I'm excited to welcome Michelle on stage. Howdy, Michelle. Howdy. Hello. I would like to walk you through all the amazing resources SAP offers for beginners getting started with SAP development or those trying a new technology for the first time. We'll first begin with the SAP learning journey on learning.sap.com, which offers you detailed learning paths with relevant courses and social learning options. The Learn tab covers almost everything you need for your learning path, like the SAP learning journey, trainings by SAP product, and the student learn zone. The SAP Learning Journey provides free, easy-to-navigate learning content, which helps you gain the skills you need to prepare for a certification. Here's an example for beginners who would like to learn the basics of a BOP programming on SAP Business Technology Platform. This course offers 40 hours of free learning and lets you discover how to apply some of the fundamental programming techniques on SAP BTP ABOP environment. 
The best part about the SAP learning journey is that they're all free, including this one here. Now we head to the hands-on developer tutorials. These help you get hands-on experience with the latest in SAP technology, including SAP Business Technology Platform, SAP HANA Cloud, SAP UI5, Integration Suite, and more. There's a tutorial for almost any skill level, whether you're looking to develop your first SAP UI5 web app on Cloud Foundry, or you're looking to connect to instances of SAP BTP ABOP environment, you'll be able to find it all in our free developer tutorials. Once you've completed a mission, marked your progress, and answered all the questions, you will earn a badge and get recognized for the new skill you've learned. Whether you have 15 minutes during a coffee break, a day to dedicate, or a few months to really sink your teeth into a new topic, we have something here for everyone. With the many tutorials available, developers can also learn how to create and deploy cloud apps and gain access to a comprehensive set of platform services on SAP BTP free tier. You'll be able to explore a variety of services, develop tests, and run in one account. You can start with the productive account so you can try different services with limited capacity, and when you're ready to take it to production, you can easily switch to paid tier all in one account. To create a BTP free tier account, it's very simple. You head over to the SAP store and follow a few easy steps to get started. Last but not least, we have our SAP Developers YouTube channel. This is for all developers interested in SAP technologies. We offer a variety of videos ranging from content for beginners to those more advanced in SAP technologies, such as our two minute of series, SAP Tech Bytes, Developer Digest, and our weekly developer news. We aim to provide you with easy to consume content and get you familiar with all the tools and technology SAP has to offer. When you're ready to learn some new SAP development skills or advanced skills you already have, please take a look at these wonderful resources. Michelle, thank you so much. <laughs> and really, given the skill situation in the market, this is one of those once in a decade moments where you can really make a difference. You can lead your organization into the future by learning more about SAP BTP. With that, let me wrap up what we heard today, but I will also have one more story before I let you go. We showed you endless possibilities you get with SAP Business Technology Platform. You have heard what is new. We announced SAP Build, ABAP Cloud, new features in CAP. We showed you the value of the SAP integration suite, with thousands of integration flows. We announced Unified Story in SAP Analytics Cloud, talked about a new class of enterprise intelligent data apps with HANA Cloud, and major improvements in our planning capabilities. And last but not least, we expanded our already amazing learning offerings. So when you leave this room, or when you close the tab on your browser, wait for that story, please remember, with SAP Business Technology Platform, we offer the only platform that has been truly designed for business. It is the business operating system. It is the innovation platform for customers, for partners, and for ourselves. And this means for everything technology-related in an SAP context, SAP BTP is the choice. Let me repeat that, because maybe that's the most important sentence. For everything technology-related in an SAP context, SAP BTP is the choice. If there's SAP systems involved, SAP BTP is the choice. If there's SAP data involved, SAP BTP is the choice. And even beyond that, we showed you that SAP BTP also works for non-SAP to non-SAP integrations and for standalone applications too. 50 years ago, our founders started this company by focusing on the processes and the people that run an organization. I will tell you this one more story and then I let you go. Hasso Plattner shared that with me. So turn back to 1984. Hasso Plattner being at the customer site, like our founders have been extremely much in the beginning. Palo Alto, 1984. He is running through a hallway, running into a woman behind a computer, and she was almost crying. He said, hey, what's, what's wrong? What's going on? 
And unfortunately, the SAP system didn't behave as she needed it. And she need, needed to put a lot of extra hours in to get the job done. Hasselblad now observed that situation, understood what needs to be done, informed the SAP team, and just three days later, that woman got an updated report, and she was so excited because it really improved her life. And aren't these the moments that builders strive for? Our founders understood the human element, and I promise you, this ethos is still in our SAP DNA. We continuously improve all areas of our SAP software as a service applications of SAP BTP. A five-digit number of developers at SAP alone wakes up every day and cares about and improves the SAP business technology platform. You can rely on SAP. We help you realize your future, and today, with a new generation of technology at your disposal, we are entering a new chapter of possibilities. I'm curious what you will be building. Now, enjoy TechEd, take good care, and see you soon.